My name is Tim and I'm an Aussie. And it is my superb privilege that this morning I get to open God's Word and share it with my brothers and sisters who are here in community. There is no higher privilege than that. So I was wondering, have you ever been in a situation where you had your heart set on something but your hopes were dashed? Come on, there was something you really, really wanted to achieve and it just came to nothing. Last weekend, the Easter weekend, we were reminded that the disciples had their hopes absolutely dashed because they were following Jesus. He was their Lord. He was their Saviour. He was the Messiah. He was the one who was going to take them into glory. He was going to defeat every victory. He was going to conquer every evil. And he died. And they saw him bleeding and dying. They saw his limp corpse placed in a borrowed tomb. They saw it sealed up with a guard. And every hope that they had had simply dashed to pieces. And when they showed up on that Sunday morning, they thought Jesus was still in the tomb. And they arrived at that tomb with absolutely no hope. Because... They thought he was still there. One tomb, one body. The tomb was full. And if that tomb was full, their hope was empty. And when they arrived at that tomb with no hope, they saw the evidence of the greatest miracle that God has ever happened since the creation of the cosmos. And they might have left with no hope, came with no hope, but they left with every hope. Because if that tomb was full, their hope was empty. But if that tomb was empty, their hope was full. Now, you might be thinking, look, you know, that's great for them. Like, wouldn't it have been nice to be there? Like, they saw the risen Jesus and I'm struggling with my life. Like, I don't think I've got that sort of power. I don't have that sort of strength. There's stuff about me that I'm struggling to change. And sometimes, I don't know about you, it just seems like I want things to be different. But sometimes as a Christian, it's just hard going. Wouldn't it be great if I had all that power? Well, let's think about this. How much power do you think it took to raise Jesus Christ from the dead. Come on, Jesus who had been arrested, interrogated, tortured, spat on, hit, mocked, whipped within an inch of his life, hanging on a cross, spear through the side, his his limp corpse placed in a borrowed tomb, the tomb was sealed, the Roman guards outside. How much power would it have taken from God to bring a corpse back to burst out in victory, to be the Lord of life, the conqueror of death, the designer of your destiny, how much power would that have taken? You reckon a couple of Energizer batteries would have done it? What about the Kuberg power station? Would they have enough? Come on, could it have been achieved with the combined resources of the whole of ESCOM? Would they have had the power? Or would there have been a load-shedding Easter Sunday morning? That demonstration of God's power is the greatest release of God's power that human history has ever seen. And here is the great news that we're looking at today, that that same power is now in you. Romans chapter 8, verse 11. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who lives in you. Come on, the day you said yes to Jesus, that same power that raised Jesus from the dead, God planted it in you by his Holy Spirit so that with him all things are possible. I know it's a struggle. The evil one will say, you don't have the power. The evil one will say, you failed every other time. The evil one will say, you can't do it. But God says, 
I have given you the power. I have given you my spirit. I know that you can do it because the tomb is empty. Your hope is full. I heard about a Sunday school class of eight-year-old boys, which I'm thinking is you know, my picture of hell. Eight-year-old boys. One of them was called Ziggy. Ziggy had a firm faith in Jesus, but he had a childhood disease. He was a little bit slower. He didn't always get things. And some of the other kids would make fun of him. Easter was coming up. And so their Sunday school teacher gave every child an empty plastic egg and said, I want you to go outside and find something that represents Easter. So the kids all went, they took their eggs and they excitedly came back to share what they had found. And one girl had a leaf, another girl had a caterpillar, somebody had a stone. The last person they got to was Ziggy. And he opened his egg and there was nothing in it. And some of the other kids says, you didn't get it right. You got it wrong. And he said, I didn't get it wrong. I didn't get it wrong. The tomb is empty, so I have hope. That childhood disease overtook him. And his eight-year-old Sunday class was at his funeral. They were asked to put a wreath on the coffin to symbolise his faith. And they walked up to the coffin and placed on it one empty plastic egg. Will you live your life this week like the tomb is still full and your hope is empty? Or will you live this week knowing that that tomb is empty so your hope is full?